So today I'm gonna to talk about the identity politics of veganism. So I hope everybody's well, and today is really, you know, the last day of dis this discussion of identity politics. Obviously, going to talk about it a little bit in the live stream tomorrow, but the live stream goes as the live stream goes. Basically, whoever shows up is going to get to dictate what the topic is going to be for that. But hopefully, we'll talk a little bit about identity politics and maybe hear from some folks live guesting uh, during the stream. But today, yeah, so we're going to talk about. Uh, identity politics as it relates to veganism and even the vegan community, right? And um, there are some who may even question whether or not there really is a vegan community, but I think that's something that can be hotly contested, right? So um, before we jump in, I just want you guys to know it's, you know, a few days away from my last, you know, uh, before I head back to Detroit. I'm really, really looking forward to that. You guys know I'm heading back and I'm going to have to hit the ground running with uh, the final touches on the international, the 22nd International Pedagogy and Theater of the Oppressed Conference, which I am the lead organizer for and very, very proud that's coming up. It's going to be starting with a pre-conference on May 30th through Sunday, June 4th. I hope folks will, you know, check out, uh, I'll leave some information in the description box below. If you haven't already registered and you're gonna be in the, uh, the area, please, please, please do. If you're from Detroit, there's actually a special Detroit rate. Check it out. Um, uh, I'm also excited. There's going to be another group coming from SUNY Purchase, from Kirk Purchase College, to do some work in Detroit on this ongoing uh, Riyadh project that I made some videos about just, you know, a couple of months ago when we had a group here from Morocco, from Indonesia, and from Williams in Massachusetts, Williams College in Massachusetts. So I'm um, going to be excited about that. I actually put out my call to the vegan caterer, the person who's gonna be helping prepare the food for the stay here, because you know, you guys know that Alt Space is a vegan space. It's kind of a vegan haven. And so, um, you know, to make that experience as positive as possible, I am hoping to have the most delicious food available for the students who will be there and the you know and the and the professors who are going to be on the trip as well so if you guys have ideas um so we're looking for um you know obviously i'm looking to have most of the food either prepped or planned by you know a professional caterer who just will you know know how to to do that in a way that's ex as exciting as possible and be able to really conceive of a two week menu that's gonna keep people enthusiastic about staying vegan for the time that they're at Alt Space. But if you have you know favorite recipes, things that you know are real crowd pleasers that are easy to prepare, one of the, um, one of the things we're gonna to do to keep costs low is that we're gonna plan the meals, but um, they're gonna actually be prepared for the most part by the guest who are staying at Alt Space. So we're looking for foods that are easy to prepare, require minimal cooking, you know, uh, require just minimal preparation steps, really simple, easy things to throw together, whole foods, fresh ingredients. Um, that are easy to get, you know, easy to get our hands on. We do have a market, um, Eastern Market, that has a wide variety of produce available. And surrounding the market, there are several places that um, that you know have nuts available, uh, nuts and seeds. There's a whole nut and seed store across the street from Eastern Market. Well, I guess it's part of Eastern Market. And there are a few folks that um, you know do you know imported spices and things like that. So pretty much can get our hands on. On, you know anything so if you have as I said before a favorite recipe that you think we should include for the group again the group is going to be about 12 people so easy to prepare for groups of 12 or more we're also going to have a barbecue and so things to prepare uh, on a grill would be great um, and you know obviously grilled vegetables you know obviously right but preparations for grilled vegan foods that are just delicious and make people, you know, really excited about being vegan. So if you have any ideas about things like that, please do include them in the comment section. 
And you know, who knows, I'll, I can talk to the whoever's going to be catering the affair or helping to do the meal preparation and the meal planning and see if they, you know, have a recipe for it or if they want to add it to their recipes. Um, so yeah, so I want to talk a little bit about, yes, the identity of veganism and veganism as, you know, a political movement. And I don't know, do people think of their identity as a vegan as political? Do folks think of their identity as a vegan as political? And I suppose that really has more to do with one's own sense of privilege, right? If you feel like you can just be a vegan and you don't have any hardships because of it, you are surrounded by people who accept the fact that you're vegan, you have access to all the foods that you need, um, you don't have any, you know, the state isn't getting involved in your being a vegan or not, and you feel pretty free to live your life the way you want to live it, then you may not think of being a vegan as very political. But, um, you know, there are vegans who do, you know, who do uh, have their, their human rights violated because of the fact that they are vegan. And because of that, um, they may see their identity as a vegan as one, um, as a political one. And so one thing that I came across, um, it's the, I came across the 1948 Universal Declaration of Human Rights, aka the, De the Declaration. And I wanted to read through some of these things and see where um, you feel that you know, one's identity as a vegan might be protected under this Universal Declaration of Human Rights. Um, Article 1 is, everyone shall have the right to freedom of thought, conscience, and religion. This right shall include freedom to have a religion or whatever belief of their choice of freedom, either individually or in community with others, and in public or private, to manifest their religion or belief in worship, observance, practice, and teaching. All right, so that's one. It goes on to say, no one shall be subject to coercion, which would impair their freedom to have a religion or belief of their choice. Again, this is particularly interesting for those who feel we are born into a coercive speciesist society. Um, and this is being um, looked at through the lens of, of veganism. One thing that I'm noting is that it uses the pronoun his a lot, and so I'm just, mm. A little bit of that, they should have been more care. Um, and then three, freedom to manifest one's religion or beliefs may be subject only to such limitation, limitations as are prescribed by law and necessary to protect public safety, order, health, or morals, or the fundamental rights and freedoms of others, which makes perfect sense, right? Because I wouldn't want my belief to be that I have, you know, the right to kill people, um, because that would infringe on other people's rights, right? Okay, and then it says Article 2 is no one shall be subject to discrimination by any state, institution, group of persons, or person on the grounds of religion or other beliefs. No one shall be subject to discrimination by any state, institution, group of persons, or person on grounds of religion or other beliefs. Well, clearly the universal human right, uh, understanding of human rights is very different than in, you know, say the United States, right? Because, you know, I'm allowed to discriminate against people you know, based on religion in the United States, right? I can, I can, I can be, you know, someone, I can say it's against my religious beliefs to, you know, to support someone who's homosexual, right? But that's a whole other thing, right? Um, for the purposes of the present declaration, the expression, in, the expression intolerance or discrimination based on religion or belief means any distinction, exclusion, restriction, or preference based on religion or belief and having as its purpose or as its effect nullification or impairment of the recognition, enjoyment, or exercise of human rights and fundamental, fundamental freedoms on an equal basis. Hmm. And then Article 3 is discrimination between human beings on grounds, between human beings, hmm, interesting, um, on grounds of religion or belief constitutes an affront to human dignity and disavowal of the principles of the Charter of the United Nations and shall be condemned as a violation of the human rights and fundamental freedoms proclaimed in the Universal Declaration of Human Rights and enunciated um, in detailed and international covenants on human rights and as an obstacle to friendly and peaceful relations between nations. 
And then Article 4 go goes on to talk specifically about, you know, states and the way states enact these things. It goes on, and I'll include all of these in the description box below so that you can read them for yourselves. But, you know, so for those of you who feel like, well, you know, vegans don't aren't subjected to those things, but I'm just going to read through a list of, you know, legal matters involving vegans. Okay, a Swiss citizen was not allowed to join the army because he was vegan. A vegan felt that she had to define her ethical lifestyle as Hindu in order to receive a medical test that was suitable for vegans instead of the standard one that uses products that come from cow's blood. Vegans have been dismissed from their jobs because of their belief. A vegan was forced by a court to provide, a, provide and cook meat for her child. An Italian minister, this case is pre, uh, pretty famous from back in 2016, an Italian minister singled out veganism as a dangerous diet and blamed parents um, uh, to imposing their moral crusade on their children, and they actually tried to have a law passed to make it illegal to feed your children a vegan diet. Vegans have been refused vegan food from public authorities while they were under their care. Vegans have suffered unfair treatment and discrimination at their place of work. Vegans have been legally forced to receive vac vaccinations made from the use of animals. There are divorce cases in which courts have to consider the welfare of the couple's children when one of the parents is vegan. A vegan employee of a public authority was refused suitable, appropriate safety footwear while the employer allocated a few thousand pounds in order to accommodate the religious needs of a colleague, okay? So um, for, for your religious beliefs, you could wear non-animal derived footwear, but as a vegan, they were not allowed the same, uh, the same consideration. A public authority defended its de decision not to supply suitable alternative uniform items to one of their vegan employees because they did not recognize veganism to be a qualifying belief for the purpose of human rights or, or, or equality law and claimed that it was just an opinion and was not protected under equality or human rights law. In American employment cases, applicants have been dismissed for not accepting vac vaccination because it was um, uh, grown in an unsuitable vegan uh, for vegans, um, uh, uh, legal cases show that veganism is often referred to by medical profession as an extreme diet, and has been uh, 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 has been accused of being a contributing factor in the malnourishment and death of an of an infant. In Canada, a teenager requested vegan food, and the request was labeled by a doctor as a likely manifestation of mental instability. In education, vegan parents requested a vegan alternative to the standard free provision of cow's milk only to be turned down and their request denied. There are re, uh, reports of young vegan pupils suffering humiliation in class by their teachers when giving presentations about veganism and have been forced to perform acts against their beliefs such as feeding captive animals that were kept in the school premises. Okay, so, you know, this is just, and the list continues on for a few more. Um, I didn't uh, include a number of cases where parents had their children taken from them um, for feeding them vegan diets. I feel like in those cases it may have been the case that the parents just didn't have their children on an adequate diet, not specifically a vegan diet, and that becomes a little bit complex, right? So we don't want to say that it was the veganism that was being necessarily targeted as much as it was the fact that the child was, you know, deemed malnourished. But those cases are complicated as well because, you know, what is considered, you know, being adequately nourished, having the right amount of what, and are children who are malnourished by parents who don't have them on a vegan diet. I don't, you know, where are the cases of of those, you know, children being taken from their parents and having it, you know, having the blame placed on the fact that they were, you know, you know, um, that they were carnist, right? So that's neither here nor there. But all of this to say that um, being vegan to some becomes a political stance, especially if the, they come up against the opposition of the state. So I guess my question is, where do individuals feel in terms of their identity as a vegan being a political position? What is the value of having veganism, you know, you know, uh, considered a, a belief system on the same level as a religion or other types of beliefs that are protected under the state law. Um, 
you know, what are the, you know, what are the dangers of having, you know, the veganism associated with things like religions? Um, what are the dangers of, you know, uh, having, you know, veganism, uh, you know, seen as a very particular group under the protection of the law? I don't know, because people might, you know, people might already feel alienated enough being a vegan without then having really their, their, them, you know, themselves identified as a minority, as an official minority. Um... I certainly, you know, just based on the evidence uh, here on YouTube, uh, vegans seem to have a very, uh, take a very uh, protective stance when it comes to the identity vegan. Who is allowed to be seen as vegan? Fake vegans, people being called out as fake vegans. People attempting to redefine veganism as anything other than, you know, the, the, uh, you know, the, the attempt to live one's life without, you know, as far as, you know, uh, possible or practicable without the exploitation of other sentient beings for food or other uses, right? Um, of seeing veganism as a stance against the, you know, property status of living things, right? Um, there are those who want to see veganism, you know, considered just a diet, right? So for them, this idea of vegans being considered a minority group under the protection of the state might be, you know, the worst thing in the world. I don't know. I don't know. What do you think? Anyway, so uh, that brings us to the end of this week of discussions of uh, identity politics. I don't know where we're going next week. I have no idea. Um, but I know that I'm going back to Detroit and I'm going to have to be focusing a lot of my energy on this conference. So I'm going to try to keep, you know, vlogging every day. I'm going to try to keep posting something every day and I'm going to try to keep it, you know, somewhat thematic. Um, and how has this been for you? What has it been uh, like for you having, you know, a similar theme for the entire week? Uh, did you get bored? Did you want me to talk about other stuff? Did you want to see me naked? I don't know. Um, all that to say, um, uh, you know, I look forward to hearing from all of you and look forward to seeing some of you in my live stream. This Sunday, uh, 11 a.m., 11 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time. That's it for this video. Like it if you like it. Share, comment, subscribe. This is Reg signing off. Love yourselves. Peace. And I love myself.